How pivotal was the stay hungry role for you? I think probably the most pivotal thing. It was the first time I was hired as an actress. Um, and, you know, to play a very different character and to really act um, in a Bob Rafelson film, very little arty kind of movie, that it was actually Arnold Schwarzenegger's first role as well. I was kind of amazed I read up on uh, some of the salaries back then. And when you did Gidget, I understand mm -hmm. you were only making $500 a week doing that show. Well, you've done your homework. Gosh. And, and yes, I made $500 a week um, before taxes. And I felt glad to get that. And when you did Norma Ray, a mm -hmm. movie that you won an Academy Award for, that mm -hmm. was also an insignificant amount. Yes. And you were offered another movie that was more money uh -huh. that you took. That mm -hmm. movie was Beyond the Poseidon Adventure. Right. Uh -huh. In hindsight, how do you feel about that, about making that decision? Well, at the time, it was a very painful thing to do. I mean, I thought I was making lots of money. Today's, you know, if you heard what that was, you'd go, oh, my God, how pathetic. But I had two children and no other income, and I was scared. And um, it was painful and probably, probably a very good thing for me to do because I learned a lot not about my work, but about who I am and what I want to do in my life. You have a, a very warm persona and you're very recognizable. Do you find that a lot of strangers come up to you on the street and suddenly start confiding in you? Um, I can't say they really start confiding. I get a lot of letters like that. But people on the streets, uh, I'm lucky enough, I get a very warm group. You know, I don't get those aggressive guys hooting at me. I've always wanted to have that, though, but never mind. I mean, I get, you know, very nice people saying very nice things, which is good. Doing a story on the Oscar Awards, and, and people will probably always ask you about, about your Academy Awards speech. Mm -hmm. well, what I was interested in is after the Academy Awards, the night of the parties, and you have that statue, what do you do with it? Do you give it to somebody else or do you hang on to it for dear life all night long? Usually you hang on to it for dear life. It's very heavy, so you find you put it down on the table or something, but you, you hang on to it just to have the weight of it, the feel of it in your hand. Now you have two of them at home. Where do you keep them at home? I keep them, uh, I keep them as near as possible. <laughs> um, right now they're in a kind of a bookshelf um, books and awards and pictures of the family and... Okay. With Soap Dish doing like an out-and-out -out comedy, was that a conscious decision for you after uh, doing Steel Magnolias, which was a film that also had a lot of comedy but with mm -hmm. tragedy? Um, actually, I did another film in between called Not Without My Daughter, which was extremely dark. See, now you with all your homework, <laughs> gosh darn it, one slipped by. Um, but you know what, there's so few good projects um, in my industry, most especially for women, that you just don't have the luxury to pick. You feel lucky if something comes across that's good, whether it's a comedy or a drama or whatever. You just grab it. Now, doing a movie with your husband as a producer, now, was that any extra pressures doing that? No, it's great. It's fabulous. Because we go home and instead of having his project and my project, we have the project that we both are focusing and obsessing about. And then when we bring the big kids or the little kids, little my little three-year-old on the set, it's we're all there, you know. And we said I don't have to worry about getting him over to visit his dad as well. I mean, we're it's like a family. Okay. And one quick question: We're doing a story on the types of mementos that actors keep over the years. What are some examples of like little keepsakes that you've kept from souvenirs from your films? Souvenirs from my films? Oh, how interesting! I have a lot of things like that. I keep ashtrays from the various locations, like Texas or Arizona or, or you know, um, Alabama or you know, in various little towns I worked in, like Opelika or you know, Waxahachie. And um, like for Norma Ray, I have a shuttle that the, you know, a cotton mill shuttle that, that weaves that the uh, mill workers made for me and they engraved on it and wrote a little card for me from the mill workers that I, mm. I'm very proud of. I like that a lot. Oh, that's nice. Sally, let's, let's talk about, a little about the, the flying nun. Okay. Uh, the last season of that show, mm -hmm. There was a change in your, uh, your physical condition yes. that you had to hide from the viewers. What was that? I was turned into a man. <laughs> I, I was having my first child, Peter. 
And of course, they wanted to hide it because I was a nun and it didn't make sense. So they couldn't write it into the show. So I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of books in front of me and flowers and things like that. And I was dressed as a nun. It was not a fun time for me. Was it fairly difficult for you to get movie roles after those TV shows? Uh, yeah, very difficult. In those days, it was a number of years ago now, it, television was really frowned on by the, by the motion picture industry. It was really the, the stepchild. And it was very difficult to make the transition. Now, they realize the power of television. And if you're successful in television, they like scoop you up and put you immediately into films. But it wasn't like that in those days.